Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you haven't checked out my music video, Pixel Dream, I recommend doing that now. I'm gonna break down the key elements of the track in terms of sound design, music theory, and performance techniques. I put chapter markers in the comments if you wanna skip around. Inspired by the graphical limitations of early console games from the 80s and 90s, I wanted to compose a piece of music and tell a visual story that referenced those aesthetics. It led me down a road of researching the way graphics were done for early games. After research was complete, I began to work creating the world and characters that would make up Pixel Dream. Every module that you see in the background is based on the real modules in my case. The characters, called sprites in the gaming world, are all animated by hand the way sprites were animated for early game systems. Once all the assets were created, instead of putting them into a game engine, I brought them into After Effects to be composited and further animated, making up the various scenes of the film. Early consoles were outfitted with specific chipsets for generating the music and sound heard during gameplay. It was the limitations of these chips that were at the heart of the retro gaming sound. The NES came with a sound chip that offered five simultaneous sound channels. Two square waves that could be set at different pulse widths. A triangle wave, predominantly used for bass lines with its rounder character. A noise channel, and a very primitive sample bass channel. There are a handful of Eurorack modules that have been built using these early audio chips or built as digital emulations. I ended up picking up the ALM Sidguts Deluxe, a clone of the Mutable Instruments Edges, an Oscillographics block, and a Noise Engineering Ataraxic Translatron. After experimenting with these modules, I ended up using the Edges clone for my two melodic lines and bass line and then I used the oscillographics block for percussion. Pixel Dream and all the Second Breakfast songs are performed and recorded in a single take. I'm not doing any layering or editing of the actual track or performance. This means that not only does my system have to be capable of making all the different parts, it needs to be set up in a way that is performance friendly. I'll go over how I do that now. Her mod is my main sequencer. Inside her mod, I program in all of my bass lines, my lead lines, and my secondary lines. That full per octave info is then sent to Symphonian to be quantized to specific chords or scales that I choose. Then Symphonian sends that quantized full per octave data out to my voices. Symphonian has a built-in sequencer for the chords, but I don't exactly use it the way it was maybe intended. Instead of sending a clock to Symphonian and programming in the number of measures that I want a certain chord to play, I send control voltage from two make noise pressure points that allow me to jump between different chords and essentially play chord progressions by hand. I'll show you that right now. So right now I'm on C major, which is the root of the key or the scale that I'm in. If I wanted to jump up to the fourth, I would hit here. So I just jump from C major to F major. If I wanted to go from the four to the five, going up to the G dominant, and then back to our root, back to our home for that nice cadence. The value of this manual control comes primarily in the writing process. Playing by hand allows me the fluidity of experimenting with the relationships of the chord and the melody simultaneously, both in terms of rhythm and harmony. I'll show you.
once all my melodic parts have been recorded into her mod and I'm performing, I could technically program in the chord changes to Symphonian Sequencer. However, because the chord changes have such a big impact on the overall song, I found that it's the perfect hands-on element for live performance. I just really enjoy doing it. For percussion, I program in all my drum patterns to Metron. Metron sends triggers down to my drum section. In addition to the pre-programmed patterns, I'm using this group of OR logic modules to combine triggers from my 4 bricks rook. This allows me to add fills and flourishes while I perform. Check it out. Lastly, for Pixel Dream, I set up a CV channel from Hermod to send out a fast LFO to FM my lead melodic voice, producing a vibrato effect, which is common in classic games. Instead of running the LFO directly to the VCO, I first run it through a VCA, whose envelope is controlled by the emblematic system's catalyst. This became a hands-on control point during the performance, allowing me to sprinkle in vibrato throughout the song. With Pixel Dream, I approached the music writing more as a movie score than a song. I wanted to reference those bold, heroic, almost over-the-top emotions that are found in video games both past and present. Through the carefree frolic of the first level of Mario to the epic boss fight at the end of a Mega Man game. To do this, I knew I needed to change keys throughout the song. The key or specific mode that you choose to work in will have a huge impact on the overall emotion and tonality of the music. Key modulation is when you shift the tonal center or key signature of your song. You can modulate keys at any point, however it's common to do so during song changes between different sections, like between a verse and a chorus or a chorus and a bridge. However, there are complex compositions where key changes are happening multiple times within a single section. The basic story arc for the visuals and therefore the music was as follows. A peppy intro like you'd find on a start screen. First world. Everything is happy and fun, there's no drama yet. The happiness climax, it's a dreamy part. Then a turning point, something bad happens. Dramatic tension builds higher and higher as our hero attempts to overcome a challenge. Finally, the tension climax into a happy triumph as the hero emerges victorious. And then everything returns to normal. We end on the happiness we started with. To translate this musically, I went for obvious choices. Intro in first world, C major, bright and happy. Dreamy part, the key changes from C major to A major. I'm still staying in a major key, but the effect of modulating between two different major keys has an emotional effect. Turning point, I immediately changed into the C minor key, the parallel minor of our original C major. So even though I'm moving from a major to a minor tonality, the fact that I keep it in the tonal center of C has the effect of maintaining a familiarity for the ear of the listener. Next, the drama and tension builds. I keep in C minor, but here I do a lot of chord substitutions to create even more tension by bringing in chords that are not within the scale. At our climax, we switch from the C minor back to a happy tonality. We hit the A major key for a really triumphant, dreamy part. After that, we return back to our original key of C major for a feeling that everything's back to normal. Without the use of key change, I would never have been able to capture the emotional range needed for the different levels of drama throughout the story arc. I hope that gave you some useful information about how I made and performed Pixel Dream. I hope you can take some of these ideas and techniques 
and put them to use in your own music. Thank you and have a great day or night.